Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to look at copying all the records from one table to another and then from multiple tables into just one table. And the example that I used is maybe it is a financial institution or maybe a retail institution and that the individual tables are daily transaction tables and now you want the day's transactions to be put into a weekly table and then of course a weekly table could be put into monthly monthly into year so on and so forth so it's the idea of taking a table based on one time frame and putting it into a table of a larger time frame so what we're going to do is I'm just going to take a couple minutes to create a couple quick tables I'm actually going to use the wizard since we already demonstrated how to do that using SQL so create table home view design view wants a name this one will be called weekly sales so therefore this is the one that the records will be copied into let's get rid of the primary key it's not needed for this demonstration and we'll just call this customer name since we said that these are going to be transactions and we'll make it a short text now an actual transactional table would have many more fields. It would have, say, transaction time, and maybe it actually stores the payment information as well as what was bought. Maybe there's also an additional field to indicate that it got reversed at a later date or a later time. But having said that, the method I'm going to show you will copy as many or as few columns as you create. In other words, I don't need to add any more columns the method that I'm going to show you will grab all the columns anyways so I don't want to waste your time with a bunch of data entry that isn't necessary and I'll and I'll demonstrate I'll show you exactly what part of the SQL does that for you so we close that and now we'll create one of our daily tables so create table home view design view and we'll just call this day one for now but we'll probably eventually use an actual date but again design is an iterative process get rid of the primary key again it's not needed for this particular demonstration I'm not saying that primary keys are not important but again I'm trying to stay focused on just the the usage of SQL so again very important the name does need to match and the data type needs to match if the name in if it, if the name of the field does not match then SQL won't know what to do so with the matching names it makes it much easier and when you think about it since you're just taking the same information why would you have different fields the very fact that it's in a different table is really the only additional information that we need and that it's for a certain week or for a certain month so we close that yes we want to save it so now we have two tables with the same fields we're just going to open this one up and put in a couple records so we've got Samara as a customer we've got Sadako that's enough you'll see that it grabs multiple records close that so this has those two records this one has done because again you're not going to meanly put records in here you're going to instead transfer the records using SQL now for those of you who have not watched the other three videos in this series I do recommend it I tried to keep them short each one except the first one I believe the second and third are both under 20 minutes so it won't take you long but for those of you who don't want to watch those all we really did we created a form with a single button and for the event of clicking on the button we created a class module which is this and just so you know these are all remarked out so these aren't even going to be executed yet this is a standard module which we will eventually call upon but at the moment is not being utilized okay so to run a SQL command you need a little bit of visual basic so do command dot run SQL and then the entire thing needs to be in quotes so insert into again as I mentioned before SQL is self-documented that this is literally what you're doing you're inserting records from one location to another so insert into 
weekly sales. That's the name of the table we just made. Now here's something we haven't looked at before. Select. We haven't used select before. Select asterisk. Now this is what I was talking about. The asterisk is a wild card. So I am saying select everything. So select every column, every record, no conditions. That's why I said I only had to create one column because whether you have one column, you know, one field or 50, that asterisk will still grab all columns. So select everything from day one, and that's the name of the other table, and we end with the close quotes. We save this. Go back to our database. I always like to save the form just to make sure that it's applied. And then we click run it. We get an advisory that two rows are going to be appended. Now, just to, to be clear, it doesn't remove them from here. Okay, so you're not moving them per se, you're copying them. And let's open our weekly sales. And there we go. So that's the basics of how you copy records from one table to another. Now, obviously, to make this be multiple tables, you would just have day two, day three, day four, day five. You would just have multiple tables in order. So, so right now you've got one command concerning one table. You would just, a simple way would be to repeat this out seven times and each one grabbing a different table name. Now to save a little time, I'm going to create a couple tables right now using the wizard rather than again going out to the SQL commands. I already demonstrated how to dynamically create a table with a name based on date. So that was in the previous lesson. So like I said, we're just going to do this using the wizard rather than using SQL since we already covered that. So create table view, design view, and the naming is going to be 09, so month, month, day, day, 07, and then year, year, 19, and then the word sales is appended at the end, which I'll demonstrate again in the standard module that I pointed out earlier. We get rid of the primary key. Again, not necessary for this tutorial. They are important, just not for what we're doing in this tutorial. And again, consistent with the naming, customer name, short text, and we close it, save it. Now what we can do is we can just copy and paste this. So copy. and then paste. There's no data to be copied. We only just created it now. We'll do structure only. So structure is the fields, the data type, but not the actual data. This one would have the data type, or you could use it like an uh, insert into and append them to an existing table. However, we don't want it to be called copy. What we're trying to do is we're trying to change the date. So we've got one for today's date. We'll do one for yesterday, so 06. And then we will do one more. So copy, paste, and we'll make it 05. And again, we'll just do structure only. Yes, I know a week has seven days, but again, if you, if you see how to do two or three, you can just extrapolate out. I don't want to waste your time with a bunch of data entry. So now we just need to enter some names into these tables. So let's start with 07. So we'll reuse Samara and Sadako. And that's enough. And then for the sixth, we will have Claire. And Rebecca, and then 
for the fifth, we'll have Jill and we'll have Leon. Close those. So we go back to our modules and we're going to modify this one. So I mentioned that we created a function that created a variable called table name. Well, now we're going to have multiple table names. OK, so what we're going to do is we'll copy this and then we'll make a few changes. Hopefully it doesn't throw an error while we're in the process of copying. So instead of table name, we're going to use the day one, day two, day whatever. So we're actually going to go backwards. So today's date would be day seven. And therefore, table name would be day seven. And it would be today's date as we talked about. And by the way, I'm not adding the line. It's doing that when I'm doing the end function and then the beginning of a new function. Day six would therefore be today's date minus one. Day five would therefore be today's date minus two and you can just keep going on and on and on like like i said i don't want to make you know seven tables do data entry hopefully you can see the pattern so day six day six minus a day day five day five minus two days and then the rest just keeps the formatting as far as month month day day year year and sales so now it's just taking these new values and putting them into this, you're inserting rather than this fixed constant name, you are instead taking those variables. Now we just remark this out and do CMD, so do command, run SQL. So the typical VB at the beginning, the quote, insert into weekly sales select all asterisks from and i'm just going to paste this in so i don't make any mistakes but i will review it with you again as always syntax tends to be the challenge so parenthesis again the tilde key without the shift quote plus sign the name of the variable that we're using and then you reverse plus sign quote tilde key parenthesis close quote we copy this and it's just rinse and repeat we want day six and day five and like i said if you're doing a full week there'd be day five there would be seven of these, not three, but again, I don't want to waste your time making more tables, doing more data entry. I, I'm hoping the pattern speaks for itself now. So let's go ahead and run this, and then I think we will be done with this lesson. So we, I did a split partway through where I was testing a few things, so I, I emptied the weekly sales, so there should be nothing in here at all. So we run, you're about to append two rows, you're about to append two more, and you're about to append two more. So now if we come into weekly sales, Samara Sadako, Claire Rebecca, Jill Leon. Jill Leon, Claire Rebecca, Samara Sadako. So there you go. You now know how to use SQL to combine multiple tables into one. The only thing that keeps this from being an automated process is there are still the advisories which bring it to a halt but in the previous video i demonstrated how to shut off the system alerts so you can just do that 
So I think that should do it for this video, and I don't think I really have much more planned for this series, so if there's anything you want to see, please leave a comment and tell me. But uh, from the very beginning, I kind of said that this is where I was looking to go to, is take multiple tables and put them into one again. This is the kind of cleanup you would do, the kind of data maintenance and database maintenance you do. You take weekly transactions, put them in, uh, take daily transactions, put them into a week, take weekly transactions, put them into a month, so on and so forth. And then you either delete the tables or you copy them to, say, an offline database, so a non-production database somewhere for archival purpose, and then delete them from your production database. So I think that should do it. Again, if you have anything else that you want to see be done in SQL or for anything else for that matter, please leave a comment. I'll do my best to try to get that up for you and have a good day.